What's up, guys? Uh, Tony Skinjili here. Sorry I missed the live stream yesterday, having some internet problems, so I'm recording this on Wi-Fi, because I can definitely record and play the game on Wi-Fi. I just can't stream on it. Uh, this is going to be the three-month cap. Uh, I haven't spent any money on this account yet in the month of June, so I'm at full 60 dollars available. <clears throat> Uh, there's nothing right now that I want to buy, but I did want to address one thing. Uh, there is two schools of thought when it comes to characters like this, right? Get them now because even though I can't use them right now, I would rather have them uh, and not need them than need them and not have them. Uh, and then the other school of thought, which is don't worry about it. By the time I got to the point where this team would be of any relevance to me, there'd be a new, more exciting team to work on. And and that's kind of where I land on it. I don't believe there's any reasonable way, uh, especially with the limitations I've put on myself of $60 a month not being carried, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that I would have a reasonable chance at unlocking uh, Adam Warlock. Not his first pass not his second pass maybe not even his third pass based on just the things that have to be done on the three month mark in the game and i don't think that phi lavelle is a good enough character outside of her full team that she's gonna change the game in the way characters like kestrel have so uh, i'm gonna keep plugging away and uh continuing to play the game the way they want me to while investing in the characters i think will help me the most uh, but I'm not going to go out of my way to be buying offers like this. I don't fault anybody who does. Your money, you're entitled to do whatever you want. Uh, and I support you for it. But uh, I can't see any value in getting Phylavel, even if I did start working on Nebula, Moondra, the entire team. Because uh, the characters I do have uh, are going to take so much gear that I want to work on to complete certain game modes and tasks that I'm not going to like shift out of what I'm doing right now. Uh, that's just going to cost me more money in the future. Uh, same thing, just quick offer checks. Uh, right now, there's nothing that's jumping out. Obviously, surfer offers are great, but limited funding means I'm not quite at the point where $20 for Silver Surfer is going to bang out any good value for me. Uh, right now, the battle passes look like a little bit better value as time goes on. But yeah, I can't justify if we spend 20 or $40 on 100 character shards of him, even though he's very good, because like I said, limited funding. If you don't have limited funding, by all means, this offer is great. Uh, we're not quite at the point where we're spending on any character that's not either unlocking something relevant to me or standalone amazing. So if, if Surfer for 20 at 50 shards isn't there, we're not spending $30 to round out the rest of this team no matter what. And then the rest of the offers are just, you know, what they are. This, again, will probably be purchased at some point in the future. Uh, it, they can't tend to come back every, like, eight days or something. So it doesn't matter whether I buy it today or sometime in the future. Uh, generally speaking, though, I like to buy it when there's a double drop of something going on. So I can try to convert the energy into more than just experience into a meaningful number of character shards and get a lot of value out of my cores. Uh, outside of that... We are out of purchases, which is interesting now because you saw the first three months of play. I got damn near close to $60 worth of value every month, even even if I was buying 99 cent offers. And now the, the value has dropped off dramatically. Like what you get for 60 in the first three months of the game, you will almost never see again. So yeah, if the Brotherhood pack came back for $24.99, that's a purchase for me. They got it. No problem. Uh, if, uh, you know, the, uh, the Asgardian pack that was around earlier that, uh, I wasn't interested in necessarily buying it then, uh, when it came out, but it, there is a chance that in the future I would pick it up, uh, for $24.99 anyway. And even then those values are good values. I'm, I'm great with them. I'm happy they exist, but realistically, if it's not for... Uh, a full team that's going to save me a month's worth of work or more, it's going to be really hard. At least, conservatively speaking, a 3,000 energy pack is worth, you know, about maybe four and a half to five days worth of energy, assuming you spend between six and 800 energy a day. 
Uh, it's a good chunk of energy. It's almost like a week's worth of farming you get just in that moment. That's a lot of gold upgrade. So, so that's value that I can see. As for character packs, uh, th there's, you know, Sinister Six. If the Sinister Six for twenty four ninety nine, we're look at how far we are already. There's, there's almost no way I would give any more money on these characters because whom they unlock aren't gonna really do anything major for me so these guys are a slow farm as it is right now when you look at all the legendaries in the game where is it uh not gonna help might help might help not really gonna help not really gonna help war raid but again so far away right never gonna happen for me uh, impossible to access realistically and honestly lost a lot of value since her original come. Uh, Maw, yes. Doc Ock, yes. Both of them are harder to get. So of all the legendaries, with how they've released characters over the last three months, they actually don't really matter anymore. None of these legendaries have the impact of characters like Kestrel and Surfer. And if I never unlocked any of these characters as far as things like Raid and um, Dark Dimension are concerned, I would probably be reasonably okay for a while. Uh, the very few characters that I would have to see eventually is Ebony Maw, Doc Ock, you know, Invisible Woman, Phoenix. Outside of them, uh, it's since I can't get them today and since I can't make any meaningful progress on characters like Jubilee, Black Bolt, Doc Ock, or Ebony Maw right now at level 63, there's... There's nothing I can do. So the truth of the matter is, I'll work up some legendaries to get the characters, but they're producing better characters now uh, quickly than they've ever produced throughout the first three years of the game. Eh, two years and eight months or so. So it's unfortunate, but I just I can't see a world where I care about unlocking legendaries anymore when... The most important legendaries are so far away from me, I can't even begin to start farming towards them in any way that would matter. And my roster contains two of the top five characters in the game, uh, Silver Surfer and Kestrel, without even, like, worrying about having to do anything other than just spend the money to unlock them. And as I said, I'll be able to buy Silver Surfer shards as time goes on, so I might find in the future, in month four, five, six that uh, there's no real growth to be had in the other character pool of my roster, so I might as well just spend those 20 or 40 bucks on Surfer. Maybe like at the end of a month, if uh, I haven't spent it, ah, I'll buy Surfer or something like that. Um, but yeah, it's hard to get Shards of Surfer in any meaningful amount. At least Kestrel's in Mega Orbs and stuff like that. For me, uh, I have everything I need for what's going on in the foreseeable future, and that's what we're going to talk about now. So as you can see, I'm, I'm farming Mystique and Psylocke every day because, truth be told, there's no one else for me to farm that isn't a Legendary Unlock. Uh, there is one other character who I am farming. Uh, I just unlocked his node a couple of days ago. Uh, as soon as I find him, we'll be good to go. Uh, it's Loki. I don't know why I'm burying the lead on this one for you. Again, sorry for any like clippies or something I'm, I'm not live i'm streaming out of a different location with wi-fi so the green screen might not be going as great as i'd like it to anyway i'm gonna save myself the time of that mistake uh loki is another character whom i'm farming now uh because it's it's reasonable i've just unlocked him i have a reasonable expectation of getting value out of him and at a black bolt over time uh so it's not that big of an issue for me to farm Loki, the same is kind of said as far as Sif goes, but the truth be told, uh, until I could farm Hela, none of it matters anyway, right? Like, I could be... This entire team could be at 5-star, and it won't matter until the day I finish Hela. And if you want to use the argument, well, you could then buy a Hela offer. I'm not building my ability to play through this game based on choosing to make purchases. I'm playing there through this game and the experience based on looking at what purchases will reward me the most. So, yes, that $24.99 and $50 uh, Asgardian offer would have been great as far as time-consuming value is concerned. Truth is, all the other characters I would farm are so far down the, you know, level 70, level 80 Doom Raid content that even if I did buy this, I would be hurrying up to wait, if that makes sense. So, 
Uh, it doesn't really hurt me too much to be buying Heimdall out of the uh, arena store as I'm getting a pretty decent chunk of arena credits every day uh, and I'm really only buying characters once a day. Same goes with Blob. Uh, I imagine once I finish Blob up, uh, I'm not going to worry too much. Now, Red Guardian is a character a lot of people have been talking to me about. Like, hey, you need him for the event. And I've said it before, so I'm going to repeat it. Uh, if I spent any amount of time working on specific teams that are needed for events, uh, I would lose so much progress through the parts of the game that I have to play every day versus the parts of the game that I play once a month. Uh, that would be the hand team, the mercenary team, obviously the skilletary, uh, etc., etc. If I were to spend that much time worrying about these things as opposed to just allowing the game and the RNG of the game to help me fulfill those and then spending the resources as time allows, uh, I would literally stagnate, and anyone will stagnate. Um, if you started the game and worked on nothing but your mercenaries, uh, you'd have a problem because then you'd have a great way to get more gold once a month, but really no way to do anything of any merit or consequence as far as U6, U7, or any of the challenging raids as they go on. So you're going to hurt yourself uh, there. And on the other side, if you spend all your time working on city hero characters, yeah, you'd be able to once every other month uh, be able to get the ability materials as you go on. And then you could progress a little bit more into the... Uh, the gold challenge milestone, which is capped at 65, 70, and 75, so you got plenty of time on those too. It, it, there's too many things for a player to worry about to make any one of them the most important. So when everything's important, nothing is, and therefore you either cherry pick which one you like the most, or you don't worry about it and work on the parts of the games you do have control over, like your raids and your war teams, etc., etc., etc. So yeah, uh, we're not buying Red Guardian, and that's not going to happen anytime soon. There's a slight argument for Shatterstar, uh, because I already have a long shot. So it's not unreasonable for me to be picking up long shot. And uh, one of the things I've been doing, as you guys notice, is I've been banking a ton of war credits. Uh, the reason why is very simple, and a lot of people aren't going to agree with me on this. Uh, I'm banking a ton of war credits because I refuse to spend war credits on these resources right now unless absolutely dire necessary, like needs this character up right now or else we'll lose arena rank, that kind of thing. Um, you know, just unlocked uh, Silver Surfer want to use an arena, I might, I'll spend some. But generally speaking, I'm saving these resources for orange gear because I have no intention of doing Dark Dimension one before two so i want to make sure that the characters i have invested in are going to have the opportunity to get the specific pieces of orange gear i need as well as the ability to pick up character shards that become relevant to me so i'm working on long shot and a little bit of sif value in the store but ultimately characters like pyro nobu cable uh x23 uh, while x23 is very high up on my list of things i'm supposed to be caring about um not yet i'd rather wait to see uh, how much I get through events as time goes on, which has been quite a decent amount, then worry about farming for her when I'm so far away from Negasonic Teenage Warhead that, like, getting a 7-star her before I get a 4-star Negasonic would do nothing but, I guess, alleviate the stress. Some people play the Hero Collectors to be like, I've done the Hero Collector. I'm kind of playing this to be efficient and help you guys be more efficient. So you don't have to do what I do, just hear what I say, and then hopefully it'll help you color some of your experiences based on what you want to get out of them. Uh, but that's, I, again, I don't necessarily recommend, same thing I was just talking about, you saving all of these war credits. If there's some growth you can get right now from using your resources, it is important to do so. As you can see, I am saving quite a bit of, of cores every day because, one, my arena ranks are doing well, and... Uh, that's pretty much it. I'm just doing well in Arena, and I don't have anything to spend cores on. Which means that when this Phi Lavelle uh, campaign comes around, I'm going to actually have a Phi Lavelle that I can use. Uh, which, to me, looks uh, pretty reasonable uh, just to have the character. And if something goes on, at least I'll have her. You know, at least I might be able to make a pivot and start working on her as a bio character if we determine that that team is, is you know, with Surfer, Kestrel, her, Nebula, and Gamora, we'll just say, are, are, are 
a god tier arena defense early game then at least i can make that pivot but i, I don't want to run the risk of buying i don't have that fear of missing out uh that some players do if someone's better than me so be it if they're better than me for spending money then they're not better than me they just spent more money than me at least that's how i tend to look at it um oh god i don't think i'm gonna win this so let's not even try again i i can absolutely spend a little bit of resources in the hand characters and i probably will uh just to get through what i believe is uh the first two maybe i might be able to do three let's see let's take a quick look at my hand roster uh, I am trying to make this the same experience you would get from watching. It's not going to be like a 10-minute video. I'm going for like a half-hour video on this, uh, even though there's no back and forth. I'm trying to keep it as real as I can for you guys. Uh, and we'll pick up, hopefully, by the time this video goes live, the internet in my house is fixed, and uh, I shouldn't have any issues. So let's check out the hand real quick. So what do we got? Two star, two star, two star, one star, one star. So uh, we can we can roll the dice on this one right here and see if I get six out of this purchase. Nope. Uh, so the good news is I could spend cores and try to get a second star on Hand Assassin so that then I have the ability to invest in the hand characters so that then I might be able to get uh a little bit more resources to spend uh now you could probably tell by my tone of voice that i am being as sarcastic as i possibly can be that is silly that is the silliest thing i can do now i could spend green resources obviously these are dime a dozen for me right now and I just want to make sure I can clear this out. Plus, these guys will eventually be worked on for this mode. But I'm not going to choose to go out of my way uh, to work on, on characters with meaningful resources. Like cores or energy that I could otherwise use for characters that don't suck. Uh, I'm interested in, in just kind of powering through the first node. Getting a little bit of resources. And then I will check in the future for the next opportunity to do this and move on. These uh, investments are going everywhere no matter what, but I'm not gonna spend it on shards of a character just to be able to maybe do a little bit better on the node. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're, we're just gonna do our best to, to keep all these guys at a reasonably low green circle investment and see if I can get through that. Uh, and we'll do that later. There's no reason to hype over it now. Uh, and besides, Rage Gaming does all the content for, for, like, how to do it with the cheapest investment. So, we'll link to him sometime. But, ultimately, for me and right now, for the things that I'm prioritizing, if you track right here, I, uh, I can't do this for another two levels, you know? So, the priority, what I need, global characters, uh, this is relevant to keep in mind and to plan. But I'm still two levels away, which is at least two weeks away. Uh, eh, maybe about a week and a half, whatever. From completing that step up. And it's the same thing here. Um, level 65 is what stops me here. So, well, I'm not there. Might as well just keep doing these. It, it, so much of this game is based on the level that it's starting to become a problem for me. And now I'm starting to see what a bad experience a lot of the new players in the game are going to have. Just because they're now stuck uh doing this they're they're stuck you know 90k away from being able to complete whatever the next lap of the campaign is which i believe is nexus nope it must be nope mystic's done am i wrong is there nothing i can do at 64 yeah, apparently not. Maybe ISOs. Mm. Nope. Yeah, so turns out, at 64, I was able to do another different... There's nothing I can do until I'm level 70. I'm just... I'm seven levels away from being able to make any major progress in my farm availability. Uh, and that's that's killer, right? Like, it's, it's absolutely killer to be out this much of my farm, farm availability of characters I want to work towards. Because, again... There's things I need to do in this game. 
you know? I need... We have Surfer, we have Kestrel, great. I could work on Captain Marvel, but I know for a fact from play that she's not going to carry me through the endgame. And uh, at least she's not even important enough now. And if something changes where she does end up carrying me through the endgame, at least then I can I can say, well, I've worked on characters that help me now, so I can work on characters later that will help me later. Uh, same thing with Zemo. Zemo's good now and in a lot of other situations. I, I, I just, I'm having a hard time converting the thoughts you know what i could farm long shot and uh eventually i'll be able to farm polaris and shatterstar but multiple man is so far away from me that just that completed team is off and then add to that the fact that the pym tech team has two characters i can't really access right now uh, how what am i supposed to do for the next seven levels that's my that's my crisis of faith right now. I don't know what the next seven levels of my time are supposed to be. So I'm going to keep working on the characters that I know I'm going to need for the future. One, two, three, four, five, you know, uh, six, seven. Killmonger, of course, being the one investment that works for three different events that you need. So, like, might as well work on him. Uh, and then the rest of the characters will come up to his level as time goes on. Same thing, I'm farming up the shards on these characters, but that's it. You know, 60 energy, 60 energy, we're done. When I unlock Shuri and IW, they'll be unlocked. Mystique and Psylocke, I'm kind of farming their shards, but ultimately, same thing. Uh, there's about eight mutants I'd rather work on than the Brotherhood right now. So, and one of them is Mr. Sinister, wherever he is. I don't even think I've unlocked him yet. Yeah. So... Right? You see what I'm saying? It's it's hard to kind of make these, these commitments early. And uh, honestly, I'm not really hurting too much. One thing I will say, though, is for what I have right here, Kestrel, Captain Marvel, Hella, Yo-Yo, uh, I'm a little bit sad that Surfer's not in this pool. You know? Just thinking about it like that. Like, oh, no... But at the very least, I can probably get a little bit of value out of Mordo um, from the Greg buff or maybe Elsa Bloodstone. I don't think there's anybody else I'm going to have to really work on. Uh, there is a you know non-zero chance that I unlock Shatterstar, but even then I don't think I'm going to get much value out of Shatterstar. So for this event... Uh, obviously, if you have Kestro, she's great. CM's a great option. Hell is a phenomenal option if you have her. Yo-Yo uh, is now farmable and is a great early to mid-game just character, especially for stuff that's going to be more difficult uh, because she'll give you that offense down on everybody. And at this point, then maybe even the Supernatural team, I noticed that there's no Ghost Rider in this pool, and that's kind of the worst, but at the very least, you could still get a decent Supernatural comp going uh, if you are to work on them. But realistically, Kelsha's going to do all the work on this fight anyway, so uh, that's who I would recommend going forward. You have you know, four days left. Hopefully you see this and you kind of go, oh, all right, makes sense. Um, that's usually a question that comes up here anyway. Uh, as for the Asteroid M Magneto event, as I've said before, I'm not going to get him this pass. I might not get him next pass. And while Magneto is a great character, I'd like to point out again, the game has changed absolutely so dramatically that the fact that I have Kestrel and Silver Surfer means that any of the first six to seven legendaries that have come out in this game are going to have such little impact on me that it's not even funny the only character i could say two characters i could say right now that will cause me to course correct and change what i'm doing uh emma is one if i got emma she would be uh the highest investment mutant i have uh follow up with symbiote spider-man the second i unlock symbiote spider-man he will be one of the if not the highest investment bio character i have uh so that's that you know that's that's the only two major changes i'm looking for uh, outside of that all the other characters in the game they serve one purpose at best you know ms marvel is one purpose at best and even now she, her purpose is you don't have to farm quake to unlock you know that's her job now you you get to save arena credits from quake so that you can use ms marvel and yo-yo to unlock uh ebony maw now that uh, Yo-Yo's in the raid store. So that's her only value. Gamora finally got reworked. We're going to put a little bit into her. Uh, just to make sure, especially... 
she's a better character now, so it's not a waste of resources to put into her. Um, there is probably some minimum maximum number that we're going to come out to where I should only use her if I'm willing to do this. And we'll figure that out. I'm willing to test that uh, because I'm fairly confident that giving her the skill gear she needs to upgrade is, is not going to hurt me in any meaningful way. The one thing that I am kind of worried about is, is these resources. I'm still not quite getting enough of these. But uh, all of my main characters are max investment. So if I'm willing to take a slight little segue into a character who's recently reworked to have some of the best stats uh, in the game, um, I'll take the opportunity and, and look at what I can get out of her. A little bit less priority on Nebula, mostly because Nebula requires tier fours to get a to get really going um, and are worthwhile. But I'm not spending tier fours on Nebula one because I'm not level 65 and two because Silver Surfer exists. You know, the existence of these two characters means we're not throwing tier fours in, in, you know, tertiary and subliminary characters. So, that's it for the entire roster setup and the events that have been going on. Uh, as for the Blitz, uh, you know, uh, there's no, there's, only thing I do is I do 15 Blitzes a day. Um, or I try to do 15 Blitzes a day for my Strike Pass. Uh, I'm noticing that the Strike Pass is becoming more and more difficult to, to do... Um, that's hard to say. It's more and more difficult to find value in the Strike Pass. Uh, and I'm at Strike Pass 2, the one that actually gives out some red stars. But, uh, I, I don't particularly care for Polaris, and she's going to be easily farmable, and I can't unlock her right now anyway. So, uh, there is a non-zero chance that under normal circumstances I would. We've already gone so far that there is absolutely no way shy of spending, um, you know, the extra... $40 for 20 strike pass slots uh, that I would even be able to complete this just because some days it's really hard uh, for me to do eight where is it uh, eight raid battles um, just because of the raids we're doing and, and the timings and everything um, so yeah just a little bit inconvenient uh, and that's okay um, I, I'm a little bit sad that I'm a little bit far behind, but life happens, and if a game makes me sad, I shouldn't be playing it. I should be playing another game. But, like, you know, it is what it is. Uh, I'm also not particularly concerned with any of the resources that are here, uh, mainly because accruing them is not difficult right now. In the game Purple, Origin Gear is actually incredibly easy to come by uh, if you are playing the game, if you are doing your blitzes, if you are completing raid nodes, etc., etc., the one thing you'll notice, though, is that there are, like, not all your characters should even be taking purple gear. You know, very few characters should even be close. Merc Soldier and Merc Lieutenant should not be close to purple gear. If you see a purple gear button on them, you might have taken them a little too far. And if they're at the point where they are the characters you're going to invest, keep in mind this is the three-month account. Uh, if you're at the point where you are going to keep this, then... So be it, but ultimately, any gear spent on characters that aren't helping you now, it doesn't matter if they're going to help you later, is a wasted resource. Because, in theory, the stronger you are today, the more resources you'll get tomorrow, especially if you're making your strength in the parts of the game that are more relevant than Arena, like uh, raids or war. The more war attacks you get, the more resources you get, the more resources you get, the more resources you can spend. Duh. Same thing with raids. You do raids every day, so the better you are at raids, the further you can go in raids, the better off you're going to be as a player. Your arena is going to give you cores. Those are helpful resources for certain things, but ultimately, the best resources you're going to get are the resources you get every single day uh, that you can actually turn into more character power. So making yourself a better raider and a better war character, war player, will always be better than just happening to have the strongest arena team you can because you can't really convert those cores into as much with the amount you get per day or the amount extra you get per day really is what it's saying um like you're not getting 200 cores if you're in the top 50 you're getting 50 extra cores than if you were in the top 100 and that's really how you have to look at it because that's the only major difference between the amount of time and effort you're spending on making your characters up but then again wherever you are in the game that'll be up to you and whether you care some days on my main account 
I care significantly more about arena. Uh, like right now when there's an event that tells me to do arena attacks. And other days I'm just comfortable staying in the top 50 to 100 somewhere in there and just not really worrying. Depends on what I need and how many resources and maybe how excited I am about what's going on. But early on, you know, I, like I said, I have the two characters that make the biggest difference in the game. Uh, the next character I would look at is Emma, can't get her. The next character I would look at is... Uh, maybe Doc Ock can't get him, so we're just doing the best with what we got, you know, and we'll figure out what that looks like in the future. Um, the next week of the game, give or take, uh, is just going to be me powering through. Maybe there's an offer that comes up that's reasonable. Maybe. Uh, again, we're at zero dollars for the month of June, uh, and right now, no, this is looking good. These mini, uh, this is a little bit of a trap. Um, this is not enough energy to justify the $5, at least in my head. Uh, so if this was a 1,000 energy for $4.99, this would have already been bought. You know, that's a 1,000 experience plus resources for 5 bucks. But uh, yeah, there's not enough value at $4.99 on this. And again, all the other offers are at best questionable. Um, he mind, he, keep in mind, like, don't waste resources. Not every character in your roster has to have a purple circle. You should only put a purple circle around a character that needs it. So yeah, there's a world where my Shocker and my uh, Green Goblin get a little bit more investment in my Swarm. But uh, it's very unlikely. It's very unlikely that my current team of Shocker, Green Goblin, you know, Rhino, Mysterio, as where they are, is going to get anything more in order to unlock Shuri. And if I can unlock Shuri with the team, I'll be confident in my ability to unlock IW with them. Same thing with characters like Black Widow, Doctor Strange. I, I get it. I and, and one thing I want to draw attention to is Shocker's at five reds. Um, that doesn't mean I'm going to work on him. Uh, there's, no, there's no player in the world that's going to see a five red Shocker on any team comp and be like, you know what? That's a ward defense I don't want to mess with. Like, it's not going to happen. The, these characters don't have any any intrinsic value outside of being used in the team. Even Ghost Rider at high red stars, like, he doesn't matter. He's not relevant enough. So the red star pools on the characters are not really going to do much. Oh, I'm sorry, guys. There is one thing I have to do for you. Uh, I haven't done it today. That's the wrong button. Here we go, guys. Here is my daily wait. Oh, cool. Thanks. Here is my daily waste of 160 cores. Cool. We are we are very 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 close to uh, not buying uh, anyone uh, at all. Yeah, we are we are incredibly close to not buying anybody. And I didn't care for any of these costumes. I kind of care for Loki, so there's a chance I might give a little bit more. Uh, on my main account, I care about him, but he's also very free, very cheap, but also I don't care about him as a character, so I'll just collect the, the credits, you know, and convert them to main credits, and we'll figure out how to use them in the future. Not really going out of my way to uh, pick up costumes on this account, especially because why doesn't this change? This should change. This should be this face. Why isn't it? Fix this, Fox, next. Please and thank you. Anyway, costumes are kind of the only thing I actually care about in this game right now. Um, and by care about, I, I don't mean spend money on. I'm almost exclusively not going to spend real money on costumes in this game. Uh, but, like, my efforts are going to be uh, towards getting costumes, really. Uh, because there's nothing else because I'm afraid of what the next couple months are going to look like as a player like me. I'm afraid that on this account, uh, I'm going to look and see... Wow, Adam Warlock, and then, like, the Heroes for Hire unlocks another Legendary. That's another setup that I'm not going to be able to deal with, you know, if some crazy thing like that happens. I don't want to be caught with my hand in the cookie jar. I, I, I can't reach those numbers. And it's not even something at that point that I could look at as a player and say, you know what? You know what? I'm excited to get to that point because I, I, I know now, I've seen enough to know that by the time I, whether I rush to it as fast as I can now, which will still take a couple months uh, and some decent spending too, or whether I just wait, 
there will be uh, a, not only one, but maybe even two more waves of overpowered characters coming. So all I care about, and this is kind of my takeaway for this uh, three-month representation of the account for you guys. Um, I don't... I'm not rushing to the finish line, and I don't think you should either. Uh, I think you should try to enjoy the parts of the game you do now and look forward to the tiny little victories you get like the finally the ability to get a character to gear tier 13 or the first time you seven star a character or the first time you spend red star credits on a character you care about try to appreciate those victories because as an end game player i can tell you once you get there the victories are few and far between it becomes more of a chore um and now that i know for a fact that it's it's more of a are you good today because tomorrow's going to be something new and not you can work real hard and become good um with a little bit of money and a little bit of time but a lot of 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 smart effort that's gone away those days are gone now now it's basically the the more money you spend the more you can do um and there's very little skill now because of things like forcing me to have to work on multiple different characters I don't want in order to farm the character I do, um, like Negasonic Teenage Warhead or Multiple Man or gating things behind a level cap that shouldn't be gated behind a level cap because the characters I have are powerful enough to do it without. Those are some changes that need to be made in order for me as a newer player to feel like there's anything remotely competitive about what I'm doing, um, even with the spending I'm willing to do. Outside of that, there's not much. Um, and that's pretty much everything. Now, of course, as is tradition, a uh, couple of things. First, we have a June update to the uh, to the sheet. Now, Patreons have access to this. It says Patreon first. Look, uh, we are updating the sheet. I'm not going to go through detail. But the roster rating specifically has been uh, updated. So any members of the Patreon will have all of the characters that are currently in the game and available. Uh, Adam Warlock, Phylavel, and... Moon Dragon are not on the sheet yet because uh, speculation doesn't help people. It hypes people. I want to know if the characters are good. I want to know what the characters need. I want to know what investment the characters take. So it's going to take a little bit of time and a little bit of effort to figure out uh, why is Phylavel good and is she good in other game modes as opposed to just trusting whatever idiot bought it on day one uh, to be like, look at how good this character is. Like, yeah, there's other content creators for that. You can go have fun with those idiots. I'm going to just kind of try to pay attention to what the actual characters do for me at different power levels so I can say with all certainty, hey, you could skip this character or hey, give them a shot. They're really good based on where you are in the game. Um, but the one thing I do want to point out is that uh, as asked previously, I have a person. I'm not going to show it to you yet. This is for Patreons only, but um, I have a personal list of character priority by origin that I track to say like, hey, this character gets all the gear I get. And then this character gets all the gear I get. And I have it built for my main account, so I'm applying that logic to this one, and I'm seeing if it works and holds up, and so far it has been. Um, so I'm giving you guys this uh, sheet. Uh, over the next couple of weeks, two weeks maybe, uh, Patreon will get to see everything first, as which is why I have a Patreon exclusive stuff. Uh, and then it goes to the live sheet. The live sheet was said to be updated with some information over the next week with the new characters. I've rearranged the red stars on them. Um, but that's stuff that's happening. And of course the links are in my discord and probably in the description below this video should be easy to come by. But the one thing I did want to show you is the three month comparison. Now, again, defenseless. Well, weak. Well, so this is the three month recap from defenseless. I just wanted to point out two things, uh, that I consider to be important. Uh, this shirt is actually destroyed. If you want, I'll show it to you like during the stream of the week. It's actually got a giant rip down the side. Uh, I don't know where that came from, but it made me laugh. So, there is, if you track, one major difference. Now, we already talked about how there wasn't going to be too much of a excuse me, of a difference in level, right? Because level is pretty static. As long as you play the game, your level is not going to go up or down in any major direction. Uh, you're going to pretty much keep there. And even if I do buy energy, 
uh, like a 3,000 pack, that's not a full level, that's percentage of a level. So on this account, it looks like I'm level 62. Uh, on my main account, I'm 63. Uh, I'll be 64 before this guy would be 60. You, you kind of see how it goes. Level doesn't matter, it's all about resources. So in these resources, obviously I was a different start. We already knew I was going for Groot, Yondu, etc. No big deal there. Uh, but the one thing I will point out is that Symbiote Spider-Man was available as a uh, accessible character when I started free to play and now he's not so you can see that the pivot of symbiote spider-man was so important in that time and the fact that I don't have him now kind of goes to show that making characters milestone exclusives without guaranteeing shards is pretty pretty heinous um if the milestone orbs functioned in a very similar way to Ultimus Orbs, where no matter what, you got one of the two milestone characters, you know, one or two shards of them on the left side or something like that, then I think it would be a little bit more reasonable. Uh, I think the fact that you have to get lucky to pull a character is pretty bad. Uh, I don't like that. I would have I would have preferred an amount of time, you know, like, hey, no matter what, you'll get Symbiote Spider-Man in... You know, worst case scenario, you'll unlock him in six months. Like, that kind of thing would make me say, okay, no big deal. Maybe I'll spend to save myself some time. As opposed to right now where uh, I want Symbiote Spider-Man, but I don't, you know, thirty-five ninety-nine want him. Uh, and on my main account, I believe he's 70 or 80 of 100. Um, so I'm a little bit ahead on the Symbiote Spider-Man account, but like, come on, Server Surfer and Kestrel, right? Uh, and at the time, Symbiote Spider-Man was that good. So to kind of see where my roster has come is come along, uh, we're actually very similar. You know, we're very similar in certain character investments. It's actually funny. I think my Thor, if I actually check, I'm pretty sure my Thor is almost the same power. Uh, only on the defenseless account, Thor was. Uh, oh no, yeah, he's not. He's six k higher. Okay. Uh, on defenseless account, Thor was an important part of my team, and here he's useless. Uh, again, we're still kind of shoring up the teams I need for, for Dark Dimension. Uh, please remember... Uh, it's really hard to say. This was done at a time when starting with Star-Lord was a very, very good strategy. Uh, and this maybe was even on the tail end of that strategy because uh, this is before they started giving away Wave 1 Avengers in some reasonable... Uh, accessibility like before you could start farming characters like black widow really early uh before they gave you away a decent chunk of other characters so because of that the guardian still provided the most resources we would not be doing this now we would not be anywhere near this right now uh if we were i'd be doing it on my paid account because i would just get out of the way even though characters uh even though the guardians are supposedly going to receive a rework in the near future I would still not, I'd still rather not focus my efforts on them uh, on my newer account uh, without knowing great details of what the characters are going to do. Um, if you're always work chasing the, the meta or whatever the next meta is going to be, you're just going to be doing that. You're going to be chasing. You're never going to be a part of it. Um, so... Sometimes you just got to play the hand you're dealt, and then when you get to a point where you can start engaging in whatever is current, you'll be a little bit uh, ahead of the curve compared to the rest of the players. It's very hard to jump the meta, uh, and when you take speculation and rumor into account, uh, while it can help you, you, one, have no idea how much it'll help you. You, like, you can't possibly know that a Guardian's rework is going to turn them into the best team in the game. Uh without you know good certainty um or if it's going to help you do something that previously you couldn't uh so it's a hard pill to swallow when it comes to making those decisions but as far as the roster is concerned let's uh let's see what else we got yeah we were we were pretty close we were at the same basic point loki i ended up pulling out of some event but as you track through like there's so little value in my roster here on, on free to play that it, it this might be the last comparative just because i'm afraid that a month from now having spent close to you know 300 uh, 200 some odd dollars on this account 
uh, I'm going to be so far ahead as far as power and ability to produce is concerned that it's it's almost losing its value every time a, a month passes because it's more than a, than a, you know, a year from when this was relevant. It's now the three month mark from when I started compared to the three month mark when I started from when the game was so fundamentally different that it might as well have been a different game. Uh, so as far as this is concerned, the one thing I do kind of want to talk about is uh, the one thing that I did do that was roughly the exact same. Take your time, game. No, no, I'm on your clock. I don't worry. Um, is I also banked the arena credits that I uh, the, the I'm sorry the war the war credits that I had. Uh, that's just something I think is a great setup. Now my arena credits I'm spending every day on something. Um, but yeah, I also banked my, my war credits. The difference was at this early stage of the game on my dolphin account, uh, gold three and gold four were like the standards of war. A year has passed and now platinum one is actually a standard in war. So it's really hard to not be, unless you're starting in a brand new with brand new player alliance, it's really hard to not be a platinum one alliance. Uh, and I'm in a Platinum 1 Alliance. And I'm still facing off against the same type of people who have most of the defenses have, you know, shield tech minions or shield officers. Uh, so I have that same experience. Nothing's changed. The entire game has shifted up where Platinum 1 is now kind of the beginning of the seriousness of, of alliances. Um, not the seriousness, just the beginning of it. And then, like, Gold 4 and Gold 3 are usually more casual or, or less knowledgeable alliances, uh, at least at the time as they work their way up. So, yeah, I'm getting more credits, but I'm still banking the than I was then, but I'm still banking them. You know, I'm not spending them on stuff. And as a free-to-play player, I did try to spend a little bit more uh, because this gear was hard to come by on the, the spender account knowing that if I needed to, I could spend five to 10 bucks on something really does loosen my purse strings when it comes to hoarding. Last thing I want to talk about on that, because there's really nothing else to kind of go over on this one. The last thing I want to talk about um, is hoarding, right? So uh, I like to bring this up every once in a while. When you look at the resources, I want to show you something. Uh, I am currently hoarding gold ore right why because i have 6.25 million gold orbs and 6.25 million gold uh and uh i can't spend the gold uh because there's no characters i don't have the training materials and i don't want to waste my training materials that i currently have on characters that are slightly less valuable so this gold is not being like hoarded particularly it's being saved so that the main five to six characters i care about working on will be able to level up get a new piece of gear, get everything when I need it to, as opposed to having a slightly stronger Taskmaster or something like that. Uh, you know, one of the characters that don't particularly help my roster. On the other side, basic orbs, so somewhere in these is a Shatterstar, so I'm going to keep opening these until I unlock Shatterstar. Um, that kind of goes the same with, like, Milestone orbs. Let's get lucky and get some... Nope, no luck at all. Cool. Uh, I am not... I am hoarding these orbs... But Blitz Orbs themselves, absolutely not. I'm ripping these open uh, on cooldown, basically. Uh, I keep about 500 in case I ever want to buy something. Look, I recruited a character. And as is tradition, since Miles is not a completely useless character, we will give him the standard issue. You're level 20. We'll put some circles around him and call it a day. We'll deal with the rest of this later. Once I see he's at level 20, I'll know to work on him in the future. These are being saved. And why is very simple. Uh, I don't know what gear pieces I need for which character. I might need bio pieces. I might need skill pieces. I know which characters I'm working on. Opening these is silly because I need all of the gear. So it doesn't matter. I'm going to need so much gear between now and the time I'm quit playing this game that, like, I might as well just wait and then figure out which specific gear I need and open them when I need them. So that's kind of what's happening. Let's use Miles, for example. If I decided I wanted to work on Miles, I'd be really happy to open about 6 to 10, 15, 20, maybe even all 36 of these orbs if it got me enough gear pieces to get the Miles where I needed to go. 
Um, but ultimately, hoarding these is beneficial to you because you're not just never opening them. You're opening them very specifically for the character you want to work on. And having a bank of these and being able to open these is incredibly helpful when you decide it's time to work on a character. Uh, again, these orbs are not being hoarded. Uh, my main account, I'm not opening blue gear orbs because, surprise, I don't need blue gear. Uh, all my characters are gear tier 10 or 12, 10 to 12 as it is. Uh, new characters very rarely run out of blue gear, uh, whatever they are. Mutants was kind of rough for a while, but I have so many of these orbs on my main account. That's fine. This account, totally reasonable. Same thing here. I am, uh, I'm not hoarding these, um, per se. I'm, the way I'm kind of dealing with these is, right now, there's no amount of orange gear I can use. So I'm not opening them until there's a point when I do. It's kind of like a little fun thing. Uh, I'll open as many of these as I have when I'm level sick, when I can start putting orange gear into people. Um, this way I can do it. Now these orbs are random completely. So there is a non-zero chance that they do update these orbs. I don't, I'm not holding my breath on it, but at least if they do decide to update these orbs, uh, I have the bank of them ready um, for when that happens. Uh, then we have the arena orbs. This is a joke, uh, the arena store. I will say, um, this is starting to look better and better every day. Uh, this is, I think this might be the best thing they've done for the game and no one's really talking about it. Uh, 500 for 20, for the, you know, the 20 train, purple training modules was it 800 XP or something. I don't remember exactly how much it is. Uh, this is reasonable. Um, I know that a lot of people are like, but what about the characters? And I agree. Uh, maybe the price is a little bit too high. Maybe if this was 350, we'd be in a better situation. You know, there's a whole bunch of things to talk about, but having access to get these three times a day or more, depending on your what you're banking, what you're working with here, uh, pretty useful as far as I, like this is concerned. And then the orbs are, like I said, garbage. Uh, same thing here. I'm saving these for the orange gear war orb twos. Uh, the 200 extra means that for every five of these I open, I missed out on one of these. Boo hoo! The ge these are better. Like. This gives me generic orange gear, which is, again, something I'll get out of uh, those orbs, raid orbs. This right here, I want all of that gear tier 14 and 15 gear, so I'm going to save those forever. Uh, same with red stars. Uh, as for the orbs, I'm opening them on cooldown. Basically, I'm just not opening anything during a, a power drop. Uh, there's no reason for me to. And uh, as you can see right here, I'm not going out of my way for two stars on any of these characters, let alone three on these guys. So there's not much going on here. I, though I would like to imagine a world where I'll have enough dark promotion credits by the time I unlock Ultron. Uh, that I could just put a red star on him and chuckle about it. Um, I don't know how much of a priority Ultron's going to be at the time I unlock him. But I'd like to believe it's somewhat. And again, like I said. Um, one, two. This is a piece I would buy. I know for a fact there's two characters that are going to take it in the near future this on the other hand um i'm not really worried about obtaining more of these but again if i did decide like hey i need to spend resources like this it's not a giant waste of my resources that i have banked this no chance uh i will accrue these through gameplay as time goes on i'm not really worried about it so that's why i don't have a problem banking it uh but generally speaking i don't worry because if you track I get enough without spending that I'm not particularly worried about running out of them. And I have enough energy and cores throughout the day that it's not killing me to do anything else. What did this do? Oh, yay, more Hulk shards. So so we're looking forward to hitting level 64. The biggest thing for level 64 for me is that RTA kicks over. Um, I look forward to that one day being able to compete in RTA. Uh, ironically... If I if RTA starts tonight or at some point, uh, and I start in the middle of a season, they have to know that I'm not gonna give them money to catch up. So, what happens for players like me who want to enter real time arena but enter it in the middle of a season and therefore have to spend a ton of money as opposed to other games where there's a battle pass where you can go backwards and complete previous stages of the battle pass and quests because the quests don't expire. You know, they might have daily quests, but those tend to be very low impact. 
ultimately, I just think that the Mojo Pass and all the Battle Pass in this game are complete garbage. Uh, and uh, I don't like to buy them. So when I do see them, the value has to be so important for this roster, let alone my main account, that it's crazy. That's it. That's everything. Guys, thanks for uh, putting up with this. I tried to keep this video to a decent amount of time. We got about an hour of it footage on this. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or stop by my normal stream. Uh, that's everything I have to say on this topic. So have a good night. Have a great day. I will catch you guys live next Friday uh, with the Defenseless Week 13. Or, sorry, uh, Dolphin Tail Week 13 review. It's been a while. And uh, then I have my normal Monday through uh, Thursday stream on Twitch. Have a good night, guys. Be good.